Hello everyone, my name is Mimi79 today I've got round number 4 of the FIA Manufacturer Series So as you can see there, 335 points on offer Now as you can see by the time in the top right of the screen uh, This is quite late on, this is the 4th slot So I did 4 of these races because I knew that I could get a result Because the car felt really good, especially in race conditions So I was trying really hard to get a good result I did get a, a good result in the first race but I felt that I could go better but this is the fourth race so every single time pretty much I just got shafted by uh, the poor track limits or just uh, bad luck through people not wanting to work together or just poor pace really as well as qualifying not going the way I wanted it to so as you can see here I'm just waiting to get a tow and we're going to follow Thunders here who is going to slow down but that's because we really want to follow Unterschnitt in the McLaren F1. Because that car has got such good straight line speed, it's the best car to follow. Because when you're uh, in its draft, you can't really catch up, even though uh, you have the advantage of the slipstream. Most of the time, you won't even be able to gain. But anyway, we're going to skip forward then, because to be honest, I don't really want to show my outlap, because there's not much really to show. So this is the beginning of my qualifying lap then, so going through the Porsche curves you've got to really attack it as much as you can because it is such a, a flowing section but here lots of people waiting to get going, we're just going to go through them all because I want to follow Jose Brea who's in uh, P10. Now he is a world finalist however he is unfortunately double accounting which is obviously not legal, I have reported him multiple times for this but it doesn't seem as though polyphony are going to do much about it but anyway into the first corner they're breaking hard for the Porsche sh no the Dunlop uh, chicanes I believe they are so going into the fast left right we're all over the back of him now so we're just gonna have to break a tiny bit early attack the inside a little bit more and then through here we are going to take a nice flowing line I can't get my words out so there he could just gain so much time because that Lambo is so much better through Tertre Rouge and there's nothing we can do but going down the back straight then we are going to get the draft and this is really important because you if you want to set a good lap time you pretty much have to have the slipstream unless you're absolutely alien and you can do a 353 by yourself it's very very difficult to get anywhere near the front without a uh, draft so into the sh first chicane then you've got to really hook up the apex quite nicely but then we are just going to skip forward here because Le Mans has a lot of straight so going into the breaking zone of the second chicane really got to kill going down into second there for the second part now he does use a lot more of the track width but I don't do this just to play it safe and to also get a tighter exit but here this is a crucial moment because as you can see here we are bump drafting him which is all well and good but then we are going to go into Mulsanne which is the heaviest braking zone on the whole track I believe because it's such a tight corner so here I don't even touch him but he just goes off and I actually misjudged my braking as well so he goes off into the gravel now at the time I thought that I punted him but after looking at it or after looking back at it uh, more it seems so he just missed his breaking point and there wasn't really much blame on my part. Made two Indianapolis then just cutting the inside a little bit too much and we got 0.5 second penalty which is just stupid because we didn't even cut it at all we just touched the curb but it is what it is and we've got to uh, go with it really so we are going to skip forward a tad towards the Porsche curves and we are really gaining on the M6 in front so breaking much later there than the car in front and we are really pushing now because we've got to serve this penalty now if we didn't have this we would be on a very good lap maybe in the 53s as we go through the Porsche curves going all over the back of Victor in the BMW but gets a better exit and we are going to have to serve this penalty so gaining on him there but there's a little lag spike and we are going to drop back just a little bit so Thunder's going through and 
in fact go into the final chicane and I do believe we take a, a better line but then he gets a better exit and on the run to the line it's going to be a 354.7 which isn't bad but it could have definitely been a lot quicker if we just didn't get that penalty now Thunders the guy behind me actually took pole position so it seems as though that his uh, or that my toe really did help him but it's the quite unfortunate that we did get that penalty otherwise we would have potentially been further up the grid but here this is a really stupid thing about this uh, rolling start we're starting on the exit of the final chicane and this means we're 1.1 seconds behind P3 right at the start of the race and there's nothing we can do about it now Rodal Vento behind actually started a second behind us so it's really spread out immediately in this one so going through the Dunlop chicane I believe just take it really easy don't need to push the track limits especially on the very first lap and we've got to really fight to get in the slipstream otherwise our race is pretty much finished before it even began so going through uh, the left right then just going a bit too far to the right we get a bit of oversteer but we don't take the worst slide through Turtle Rouge but Unfortunately, that Lambert can carry so much more speed and as we go towards the first chicane we are out of the slipstream but we take a really aggressive line into the chicane and we are back in the toe so that was a really important corner because if I uh, messed it up then that could have been uh, my chances over in this race as we go towards the second big braking zone of this track then so you've got to really attack this first part but I'm just taking it quite easy because you know heavy fuel uh, cold tyres you've got to really adjust your braking points so catfish there moving up into the lead but at this point we're 1.6 and uh, extending the gap to Rodal Venter behind so I doubt that he's going to be much of a player in this one but as we go into Mulsanne as you can see just slowing down you've got to really uh, judge your braking especially in the, in the toe but as you can see there there's two kind of groups emerging now because you've got thunders on the left you've got catfish on the right and we are going to stick to the left hand side so catfish is going to lose out but thunders moves over to the right but thankfully uh, player pro is going to stick to the left and we're just going to bump draft him and he actually gets a bit of a boost there, I don't know what that was but that is really going to help us and that's going to allow us to go round the outside of Thunders into Indianapolis so you've got to really judge an overtake there quite well because of the track limits on the inside of the corner so as we go to Arnage, a really tricky corner, really deceiving as well because it's so narrow on the entry and on the apex as well you've got to really nail your breaking point if you want to make up a lot of time so we're going to bump draft a Lamborghini here now in hindsight I really should have gone for the move because I do think that was quicker throughout the race but again hindsight is only so powerful you can't change the result unfortunately but you know we still have to just look at it in a positive light we are running in P2 in split 2 which is just mental you know three months ago I never thought that this would have been possible but it is possible now so going through the Porsche curves then that Lamborghini just has so much more speed it has much better rotation than the Aston Martin through the low speed corners unfortunately there's not much we can really do about that but into the Ford chicane then really attacking it a lot more and we're just going to take it nice and easy no need to extend the track limits especially this early in the race as we go into turn number two because this king is technically turn number one and we are gaining but we're not going to go for the move because at this point it is just stupid to go for the overtake especially as uh, there's the back straight so close as well the best place to overtake I think on this track is Indianapolis because apart from the Porsche curves you can't really go for revenge overtake anywhere else so if you can get it stopped nicely then I think Indianapolis is probably the best place to go for a move so they're really hooking it up but we're still not getting all too much but we are just going to skip it forward to the end of lap number three 
because this is a, a really important bit here. So we are still on the toe of the guide front, but we just break a bit too late. And unfortunately, we just go into throttle the tiniest bit, and we unfortunately pick up a one second penalty. Now, I believe that if I didn't go on the throttle, I would have escaped that because I was on the brakes. So, again, if I wasn't on the throttle, I do believe I could have got away with that. But fortunately, again, you can't change it now. But we are still in the lead group, and if we can get past Player Pro in front, then we will have a bit of a buffer to the cars behind. And this will be really important come the end of the race because if you kind of go out the main group then you are basically screwed because you're going to be losing at least half a second a lap minimum because you don't have the draft even if you're gaining all the time back in the corners there's not what you can really do but again just got to try and get past him here we do have the better run and we are going to pull over to the right hand side and Thunder's actually going to follow us through and he's going to stick to the right he's just going to pick up the draft of player pro there for i think a second but he's just going to bunch draft us and that's really good teamwork from him now every w teammate we've got to try and work together to get the best result we can so breaking super late into the chicane then you've got to really nail that breaking point because in practice i was losing four tenths at first because i was just breaking too early so they're just having to slow down to serve my penalty and unfortunately there's not much I can do so we've dropped out down to fifth place which is just crazy given that we were in the lead not so long ago but we are on the cusp of losing the slipstream so the gap is increasing to seven tenths and now we are out of the slipstream so we've got to nail this braking point we're breaking a little bit too late I think but we are back in the toe and that was another crucial moment because if I didn't break that late I don't think I would have got back in the tow but thankfully we have and that is really really important because once again the tow is so important around here even if you are one of the fastest people on the game there's not much you can really do when someone has got the slipstream so into Mulsanne then I just break a bit too late because I didn't uh, realize the effect of slipstream and we go to the outside but thankfully uh, no one loses any position so we're just going to skip forward then to the end of the straight and we are going to gain a lot in the braking zone there's actually a tiny bit of contact between myself and Red Alventa but I do think that that was just lag but into our Naj then everyone braking super early no one really wants to take any risk especially at this point in the race where there's only three laps to go it is a very long track, so the lap times are about 4 minutes, especially in the Group 3 cars. But here, this is another important moment. Thunder's there getting a 0.5 second penalty. And this will mean that he'll probably get sent to the back of the train. But also, just keep an eye out on the gap to Prima Eddy, who's in the 4 GT, I believe. Just bear that in mind as we go through the rest of the lap. So, it's just gone from basically 4 seconds to 3.8 just because we've had to go so slowly through that section. Now bump drafting Rodal Vento here and into turn number two. We're gonna go to the outside but again that was just because he was braking early. There wasn't really much I could do. Not really much elsewhere I could go. But as we go into turn number five and six I believe, depends how you count the corners, uh, really just have to attack this first bit and then get a good exit on the second part of the kind of chicane and then into touch of rouge one of the hardest corners on the whole track because you can really lose so much time by getting it all wrong but we're just going to skip forward then to uh, the braking zone just braking nice and early and we are just going to uh, follow in formation so Thunder's there up into the lead but that's really because he has his penalty to serve so he's going to stick to the left hand side and he's going to drop from first all the way down to fifth, which is just crazy that how much a penalty can really lose you on this track. But as we go into the second chicane, then once again, really tricky to nail your breaking point. But as we head into the chicane, we have to go really slowly because I believe the leader is struggling at this stage, perhaps a tire wear or just a 
lack of consistency but skipping forward then to Mulsan and we are just going to break nice and early make sure that we don't make any stupid errors and then clip the apex very nicely you've got to really nail your breaking point to this track I feel because it is such a high speed circuit you've got to know your breaking points but this is another important moment uh, middle of lap six. So good. I wanted wanted to only overtake Red Alventa, but I just completely misjudged my breaking point. That was 100% my fault, and I wanted to let Catfish back through. Now, once again, just really important to nail your breaking point, and uh, I could tell that he was really frustrated at that. As you can see, yeah, he's just wiggling uh, his steering wheel on the straight, which just goes to show how frustrated he is but we are going to try our best to get back in the toe of the leader and it seems as though he's completely missed his breaking point and this is going to allow us to gain lots of time now Catfish gets a much better exit and because of this he is going to get back in the toe of the leader I believe but he's only just in the slipstream range for now whilst we go towards Indianapolis then for the sixth time seven lap race this so you're looking at almost 28 minutes for a quick finishing time as we go into the fast left hand you've got to really uh, nail your brake marker once again so important at this track and then into our notch then clipping the apex very nicely and that is going to be the end of lap 6 then so Going on to the start of the final lap, then lap number 7, we are going to go into turn 1, but we're just going a little bit too hot. We're going to cut the inside the slightest amount, and that is unfortunately going to pick us up a 0.5 second penalty. I cut the limit, so it was my fault, but it was the tiniest of cuts. I looked back on the replay, and I was barely over the white line, but really frustrating. But again, it is the limit, so you've got to respect those. As we go into Tertre Rouge, then got to make sure that we get as good an exit as we can. Now, I don't want to go for the move here because I'm just too far back. So we are just going to skip it forward a little bit to the chicane. So we're going to stick to the right hand side, but once again, just too far back for the move to happen. But Catfish gets a really poor exit. We try to go to the left to avoid giving him a bump, but fortunately we do. So we are going to have to serve this penalty. So dropping all the way back down to P5, Strodov enter goes past us as well. But thankfully, Thunders gives us a toe, I believe. So this is going to allow us to close uh, back up. But unfortunately, moves over to the left again. So it's going to be advantage to the Mercedes on the left hand side. But breaks slightly later and that is going to drop us back down into P5 so again a much better exit than the leader as the Delta has just gone from one and a half seconds to 1.2 in only that corner so you could definitely tell at this point that maybe he's not as composed as we are but as we go into more sun Road Aventus is going to look for the move which is going to back up we'll run the outside but again, I think there's just a little, tiny bit of contact. The Thunder's just going to go a little bit wide. And we're going to follow Ronald Vento through here. And by this point, it's almost impossible to catch up with the front two. Because, again, they are out of our slipstream range, unfortunately. I think due to that contact, uh, that, there is pretty much no chance of us getting into the lead of the race now. But here, I look for the move, but there is literally no space. So we are going to have to back out for now. Thunders is actually on the right then. He goes for the, the move, but it, just, it was just never on, really. And he does back off to indicate that it was just a, a mistake. But into our knowledge, then clipping the apex very nicely. And then powering out the Aston Martin has really good acceleration. So that does help in that regard. As you can see that we are pulling away from Thunders. Even though he is in our slipstream. Just goes to show how good uh, the Aston Martin is in acceleration. But as we go into the Porsche curves for the final time then. Breaking really late. And he actually goes a little bit wide. We are going to take a much more flowing line than he is. So we are definitely gaining here. And again just taking a tighter line. He goes 
a little bit wide on entry. I think he piles out a little bit too early. And then goes wide on the final part of the Porsche curves. And we do get the better momentum. And we are going to have a good chance of going for the overtake into the four chicanes. But he doesn't leave us any room. So we're going to have to break super late. And that move was really ludicrous. We just break way too late. But we are going to have to have another look at that. It's going to be P3. But there's a lot, I, th I do think that there's a lot to be cleared up about the move at the end of the race. So we're just going to look at back at that in a moment. So as you can see here, I get a much better run of the Porsche curves. And, and he moves to the left, but he, again, he's moving to the left even though we're there. And we have no visual brake marker at that point because my usual brake marker was completely obstructed. So, again, it's a bit of a 50-50 one. I do believe the gap was there, and he just didn't leave me any room. But as you can see here, we are now in P10 after that race. So, 307 points after that one. And Rick there, our teammate, actually got 328. So, really good result for him. We're 84th in EMEA. So, again, really good result. This race was actually really fun. I didn't expect it to be so good, but you know, I had a lot of fun with this one. So, again, if you did enjoy, leave a like and subscribe, turn on post notifications, join my Discord server for more tips and tricks on GT Sport. And also, don't forget to leave a comment down below if you have any feedback. But again, take care, everyone, and goodbye.